He says his own. <clears throat> when he talks about loving Jesus, somebody say loving Jesus. Loving Jesus. It is important to love Jesus. Romans chapter 8. You need to fall in love with Jesus. Because number one, he loved you. Yes. Very important. Romans chapter 8. We are reading from verse number 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Amen. Amen. Loving Jesus is very important because Jesus first loved us. If you should know how Jesus loved you, you see, you will not regret loving Jesus. You see, love cannot just be found easily. There are most of the time people can say they love you with their mouth. They love in words, but they don't love in deeds. But we have Jesus who has a real love for you and I. Jesus who actually loves us for who we are. Not for what he can get from us. Not for how good we are or how bad we are. You know, he just loves you. Because he feels like loving you. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, if Jesus were to be asked, Jesus, why do you love Ezekiel? Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus will tell you, I just love him. I don't have any reason. I just love him. Hallelujah. Amen. Is it because he's short? Is it because he's tall? Is it because he can speak English? Is it because he can teach feet? Is it because he's holy? Is it because he's righteous? God will say, no, I just feel like loving him. Hallelujah. Amen. That is how the love of Jesus is. You know, we human beings have a reason for loving somebody. You know, sometimes we love people because we think they are good. They are lovable. We have people who are lovable, and we have people who are unlovable. Hallelujah. Yeah. When you are lovable, it means it is possible to love you. Yeah. When you are unlovable, you know, it means there are so many things about you that is not good. That in fact, even though the person loves you, you cannot abide by those things. Yes, you, you, you are unlovable. Like a mad person. You know a mad person. You see, when you are mad and you go naked on the streets, you are what? Unlovable. Your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your husband, your wife cannot even love you anymore. You become what? Unlovable. But such a person, Jesus can love the person. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so the love of Jesus, you see, doesn't have reason. He doesn't have reason for loveness. He just chose to love us by grace. No, the Bible says, for by grace you are saved and not of works. So Jesus chose to save us. By his solid grace. His grace made a difference in our lives. Amen. Amen. So when I define Jesus' love for me, I cannot tell you the reason why he loved me. It's not because I pray more or I pray less. It's not because I have money to give Jesus. It's not because I preach about Jesus. Because, you see, even the preaching is because Jesus loved me, that he has given me the grace to preach about him. Amen. If Jesus doesn't give me that grace, I can't preach him. I can't preach about Jesus. So, one of the reasons why you have to love Jesus is because Jesus loved you. Amen. Amen. And uh, another reason is what we are reading now. 
He said, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Amen. Amen. So the second reason you need to love God is because all things will work out for your good. When you choose to love God, whether sickness or health, it will work out for your good. Whether you have money or you don't have money, it will work out for your good. Whether people love you or they hate you, it will work out for your good. Because you love Jesus. You see, whatever happens to you, you can be like Joseph. Your brothers will hate you. They put you in the pit. They sell you as a slave. They put you in prison. That everything will work out for your good. Because you love God. You love God, whose name is Jesus. You know, God is his title. His name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah, God is his title. The, the, you see, the Hebrew word is Yeshua, a God who saves. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. The virgin shall bring forth a man child, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. The Hebrew says you shall call him Yeshua, which is a God who saves, for he shall save his people from their sins. So when we want to talk about Jesus, we are talking about God. But his name, we have the revealed name. The revealed name of God is Jesus, is Yeshua. Hallelujah. Amen. So all things, all things. He didn't say some things. He said all things. Amen. Amen. Wow. You tell me all things. Even when I don't have money in my pocket, it will work out for my good because I love God. Now, listen, if you don't have money in your pocket and you don't love God, it might not work out for you. Hallelujah. Amen. But if you love God, it will work out for your good. Amen. Amen. That, that's, why, that's why we love Jesus. That's why we love him. When you are sick, and if you don't love God, in fact, the sickness will work out to destroy you. But when you love God, the same sickness will work out for your good. Amen. You will come out of that sickness gloriously. Amen. And you have a healing experience. Amen. God will begin to use you to even heal other people who are sick. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, it, it will work out for your good. You come out of it with connections, with blessings, with grace, with open doors. So that which the enemy thought that is going to use to destroy you, God will use it for your good. Because you chose to love God. God. You chose to love God, whose name is Jesus, whose name is Yeshua. It's important that you love God. It's for your own good. If you want all things to work out for your good, you have to love Jesus. Because you know what? Jesus can never be disadvantaged. He can never be disadvantaged. He can never lose. He's a perpetual winner, a continual winner. In fact, the Bible tells us that there is nothing Jesus cannot do. He can do all things. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh yeah, he can do all things. So you need to love Jesus. If you don't love Jesus, the witches can conspire against you. They'll get you. But when you love Jesus, eh, even though they get you, God will deliver you gloriously. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And God will use it to save so many people that the witches are destroying their lives. Amen. 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 You see, that's it. That's it. See, loving Jesus, even though you pass through hard times, crucial situations, crises, anything, you, you can name it. You can name it. But you will come out with all the glory. You will come out with all the favor. You will come out with all the blessings because you love Jesus. Amen. Amen. They can choose to put you in a pit like Joseph, but you come out of it. Yes. <laughs> Mommy, I'm not going to tell you why. 
So they can choose to do anything to you. They can choose to sell you as a slave, but that is where God will make you overseer. Amen. Love. Okay, now let's look at Joseph in this point. Let's look at Joseph if he doesn't love God. And then they sold him as a slave. He would have been bitter against God. He said, God, you are wicked. You are the God of Abraham and Jacob. You are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are forsaking me like this. And now look at me, I'm a slave. God, you are so wicked. You are mean. God, you are powerless. That, that you have been cursing God. And that's where the devil can win the battle. When you don't love God, and you pass through hard times, trying times, difficult situations, you begin to curse God. You know what it means to curse God? Job's wife told Job something. He said, curse God and die and be free. Can you imagine that? Out of the challenges Job was passing through, Job loved God, you know. If there is somebody who really loved Jesus, it was Job. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, God gave him all the riches. God gave him all the family. God gave him all the good things in life to see whether Job will love those things or he will love God. So God allowed Job to face a time of crisis. Hallelujah. Amen. And in the time of crisis, Job has to prove that he still loves God. Not because God has given me money, that is why I love him. Yeah. But I still love him. When the money is not there, I still love him. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, not because God has given me health. That's why I love him. I still love him. When I even feel pain in my body, I still love him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, yeah. Some time ago, my leg was paining so seriously, you know. We were sleeping here. And the teeth was kind of dangerous. I had to rush out to pursue the pain. And my wife, my Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, yes. So in the process, I hit my leg with one of the wood here. You know, this leg pained me for three months. And out of the pain, I was still walking and I was still going to preach. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, yeah. I was still preaching Jesus. Talking about Jesus. I, I was not bitter against God. I didn't say, God, why do you allow this to happen? We were sleeping in the church. We just prayed. You know, that time, that night, I prayed at 3 a.m. Yeah. Yes. Then I slept. And then around 3.30, as soon as I slept, 30 minutes later, the guy came. And the thief was coming. So I rushed to pursue him, and that's why I hit my leg. So what am I saying? If this thing could happen to me, even whilst I was praying, I could have been bitter against God if I don't love God. I would have said, God, why do you allow this? But you see, when you love Jesus, during times like this, you hold on to your faith. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. So I was limping for four months. You know, everybody know it in the street. Hallelujah. Amen. Limping and going and coming and so preaching and all that, you know. So Job had a trial time. He loved God. With all his heart, he loved Jesus. So the devil came in. He says, no, God, this guy does not really love you. If you bring temptation his way, he's going to curse you. Now look at Job chapter 1, verse 1. The Bible says, there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, one that feared God and eschewed him. The Bible says he feared God. And the Bible says he hated evil. Yeah. He feared God and he hates. That's one of the things about loving God. When you love God, you will hate evil. When you love God, you will hate the devil. When you love God, you will hate demons. When you love God, you will hate the witches in your family. When you love God, you will hate to do evil. 
Hallelujah. You can't tell me you love Jesus and you also love sin. You love Jesus and you love to steal. You love Jesus and you love to lie and kill and commit adultery. You can't love Jesus and at the same time loving to do all the diabolical things in this world. If you choose to love Jesus, there are some things you will not love. Hallelujah. Yes, there are some things you will not love because you love Jesus. When you claim to love Jesus, you have to understand that Jesus will have ravels. Okay, now, like me, if I claim to love my wife, I cannot go around sleeping with other women. You know, that is not real love. Because, you know, real love is a commitment and a dedication. So, God would not share his love with his sin. What is a rabbi to God? Anything sinful is God's rabbi. Lying is a rabbi to God. Stealing is an enemy of God. Killing is an enemy of God. Fornication and adultery is a rabbi to God. They are all seeking to take the place of God in your life. They are all seeking to take you away from God. If my wife loved me, she would not have a heart or love for any other man. Hallelujah. Yeah, because if that man comes in between us, he's going to break the marriage. So, Job hated evil. When the Bible says he eschewed evil, that word there means that he hated evil. He doesn't want to have anything to do with evil. Job was the type of man that would not sit down and watch people do evil, and then he would join them to do it because he loved Jesus. So one of the signs a person loves Jesus is that he's going to hate sin. If you start loving Jesus, you begin hating sin. Hallelujah. Amen. The moment you find out that you begin to love Jesus, you begin to hate all the bad things that you used to do. That is a perfect sign that you love Jesus. Amen. Somebody say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So, the Bible say he is upright and perfect, he feared God, so he hates evil because of his love for God. <laughs> Satan comes in, and then Satan says, God, this guy does not really love you. He doesn't really love you. Because you have given him goodies, riches, wealth, that's why he loves you. Do you know that when Satan went to Jesus, um, God did not really bother about Satan much, but he cared about Job. Satan did not go with the name of Job, but God mentioned Job's name. Hallelujah. Amen. He asked Satan, why have you come? Satan didn't say, oh, I've come because of your servant Job. No. Look at what, what Satan said. Job chapter 1. Now, we are looking at verse number 6 to verse 8. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Can you imagine that Satan can come to where the sons of God come? Satan can come to where the children of God come. Why is Satan permitted to come to the gathering of God's people? There's, there is a simple truth. It is because it's a court. Our gathering is like a court. Satan is our accuser. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Jesus is our lawyer. God is the judge. So he always comes to the court of God to accuse God's people. The Bible calls Satan the accuser of the brethren. So he's free to come. He's free. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He has been condemned, but he will go to hellfire at the judgment day. Yes, there is a day when 
Satan will be put into hellfire. But for now, the work he's doing is accusing the brethren. So he went to God's court. And God asked him a question, verse 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. So I've come because I've been walking to and fro. You, you notice here that Satan does not have a house address. Satan does not have what? He's homeless. He walks to and fro in the earth. He doesn't have permanent residence. So when he comes out, he's walking, he sees some people who are living, a couple, a married people, they are living happily. Satan will just go and live there for a while and destroy their marriage. Oh. When he finishes, he walk out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. And then he goes to another place. He sees a young man who is hustling and struggling to become somebody in life. Satan will go and attack him with womanizing. Then this guy will start sleeping with different, different women. When he finished with him and destroy him, John 10.10, 10, the thief does not come back, but to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I've come so that you may have life and have it in abundance. That is Jesus. He comes to give us abundant life. But Satan is roaming to and fro in the earth. He goes everywhere. Satan goes everywhere. Hallelujah. <laughs> Destroying people's lives. Destroying people's life. That's why you need to love Jesus. So that when the devil comes to you, tell the devil, Satan, get away from me. Satan can visit anybody at any time. As we are doing service, he can walk in here and just take a seat as if he's one of us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Just that he can so that he can create confusion. So that he can destroy the church. When he finishes, he walk away. He's roaming. About he's a Roman ambassador, he does not have a house residence, he doesn't have a permanent resident, permanent address. So look at what God said to Satan, verse 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feared God and eschewed him? Hello. Hello. Praise the Lord. You see, God mentioned Job. He, he, see, Job was not the devil's target. The devil's target is roaming about the world. Do you know that we that are God's children, Satan cannot target us. The reason he cannot target us is because he can't see us. He cannot what? See yes. us. Spiritually, the Bible says we live in Christ. Our life is hidden in Christ in God. Amen. Amen. There is a hedge of protection. Okay, for instance, if you are inside this house and somebody is passing the street, will the person see you? No. Because you are inside the house. And then this, let's say this house is God's kingdom and the gates are shut. Amen. There are angels guiding the kingdom. So Satan will just look, will just pass by and look. Say, hey, this is the kingdom of God. Oh, I see. It's full of the children of God. Oh, I see. The gate is shut. Angels are there. Oh, this place is no go area for me. Then he will pass. Hallelujah. Amen. So it is God who mentioned Satan's, it is God who mentioned Job's name. God said to Job, he said to the devil, have you considered this my servant called Job? He told the devil like that. That this my servant is very perfect, is upright. He lives a holy life. He lives a righteous life. Think about it. Then you know what Satan said. Look at what Satan said. Verse 9. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Don't Job fear God for not? Has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he have on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and he sometimes is increased in the land. Hallelujah. Amen. So Bible say, Satan says, Job's love for God, or his fear for God, is not for nothing. It's a business. It's commercial. God, he doesn't just love you for nothing. 
He loves you for something. He loves you because you have made a hedge. You know hedge is a protection. Hallelujah. Amen. God has protected him. Satan cannot go in and destroy his life. He has protected his family, his children. God has protected his business, his finances. Job doesn't have all the problems that people face in life. Yes. So, if you love God, God will do all these things for you. Hallelujah. When you see that Satan has started to come into your life and he's testing you, it means that he has accused you. The devil has what? Accused you that you don't really love God. That you need to be tried. Your love for God needs to be tested. Yes. God needs to test your love for God. Try your love for God. So if you see, loving Jesus is a process. You see, we didn't just sing songs and get away with it. Here, say, I love you, Jesus, more than anything. I love you, Jesus, more than life itself. I love you, Jesus, more than anything. I love you, Jesus, more than worldly wealth. I love you, Jesus, more than anything. And do you have seen that you love Jesus? You have to test that love for Jesus. Your love for Jesus must be tested. You need to understand that you cannot just claim and say you love Jesus and get away with it. And then you think God will understand you. And then you think Satan will not accuse you. God is saying he loves you. Okay, let me tell you that all this song he's singing is a lie. The guy, the lady, this child of God does not really love you. He's only singing because you have done this for him, you have done this for him. Lord, you have to try his love. If you have ever gone to God before, they test cases, they test people. Hallelujah. Looking for evidence. So you are under trial. Any Christian who passes through challenges, temptations, your love for God, your love for Jesus is being tested. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Bible say, the devil said, you have built a hedge protection for him, number one, and about his house. That is his family. Yes, his wife and children are all protected. Amen. Amen. And then he said, about all that he have on every side. God is protecting his business, his flock, his sheep. They are all protected. Hallelujah. And the second factor is that thou hast blessed the work of his hands. And his substance is increasing the land. Another factor is God has blessed him. Amen. Amen. So the devil destroyed people's life. He cannot touch Job's life. He can't go into his business. He can't go into his finances. He can't go into his children. Everything about Job is gazetted. It's, it's secure. It's protected. That is how it is when we love Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything about us is protected. Angels are in charge. But when you see that you are being tempted, things are going the wrong way, it means that your love is being tested. Your love is being tested. So... God blessed Job and increased his tough times. And the devil said to God, he said, put forth thy hand now and touch all that he have, and he will cast thee to thy face. Hey, say, God, destroy everything. And this guy that you think love you, you will see that he will start cursing you. So when you are passing through challenges as a Christian, when you are passing through difficult times, when you are passing through trying times, this is where we see the genuine child of God in you. Hallelujah. Amen. A genuine child of God in you. Amen. This is where you maintain your faith. This is where you prove to the devil that though he slay me, yet will I trust him. That's what Job said. He said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Wow. Wow. God is killing you, and you still, you still, you still trust God. Yeah, like, like Jesus. When they were killing him, he said, Father, I commit my hands unto you. He was not bitter against God. He said, God, why did you allow this to happen to me? Why did you allow these people to crucify me? No. Like 
Stephen, when they were stoning him, when they were stoning him to death, he said, Father, do not lay this sin to their charge. Amen. Don't lay this sin to their charge. These are people who love Jesus, who love God.